Hello, everyone. I am sorry that I have to be gone today, but the soccer team is away in Missoula, and I'm coaching them. So uh, for days that I know I'm going to be gone ahead of time, I typically a, record the lesson to go along uh, with the plans for the day so that it's as good as if I'm uh, actually here. So first thing you should do is have your assignment out from yesterday. Most of you finished in class and showed me and earned your paycheck, so that's awesome. If you haven't already, make sure that you've got your phone checked in and your calculator acquired. And here are the answers for yesterday. Uh, I wish I could be here as we're correcting our first assignment, because when you're correcting it, this is what you should do. You should have out a pen, because it's different than the pencil that you did the work in, and then you should be correcting your own. You should mark any mistakes, uh, mark any ones that you missed, circle mistakes that you made. And at the top, you should write how many you missed, like minus one or minus two. The reason you do that is because then when you're studying and you're reviewing through your old assignments, you can see like, you know, I missed zero, I missed zero, I missed two, oh, I missed five. I should probably review that section. Uh, that feedback is really just for you, though. It's a self-assessment. I, when I'm walking around checking homework, I'm just going to be grading based on completion. So here are the answers for yesterday's assignment. I'm going to check this and today's assignment tomorrow when I'm back. So have your assignment out. Here are the answers. Uh, the first one was 25. The second one was 36. 3 is 3. 4 is 17. 5 is 24. 6 is 1. 7 is 3. 8 is 6. 9 is 12. 10 is 16. 11 is 36. And 12 is 3. With that said, uh, how about your note packet for today? Today we are doing section 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. It's going to take two pages in the note packet because uh, there's a lot of tables. It's not that it's necessarily any longer. It's just that there's a lot of space taken up by tables. If you were gone yesterday, you missed me passing out three things. You missed me passing out the assignment sheet, the note packet, and the worksheet packet. So you'll need those th items, and I put those in the bin in the back corner of the room. If you were here the first day of school, I showed you where that is. Hopefully you have some classmates that can direct you. So if we need to pause the video now to make sure everyone's ready, go ahead and do so. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that we are good to go. So here we go. This section is all about translating between languages. So here's just a fun little introduction. The first one, well, that's obviously English. English. The second one, bonjour, that is French. Hola is Spanish. And I don't know how to say the last one. And that's because the last one is Mandarin Chinese. You probably take a foreign language class, a lot of you. But you actually take another one you might not be aware of because this last one is mathematics. And today we're going to be working on, and a, a lot of the year, going between math and English. Today that's a big focus. So the language of mathematics, we have four operations. Yesterday we focused on the order of these operations. Today we're going to be working on translating them. The items underlined in red are specifically what you need to fill in for your notes. Addition, one of the words for addition is sum. You'll also hear plus, total, more than, increased by. Subtraction, you'll hear the word difference, less than, minus, or decreased by. Multiplication, the mathematical term is called a product. You'll also hear times, multiplied by, or of. Division, the mathematical phrase is quotient. That's how you say that word, is quotient. Then divided by or divided into. But the words underlined in red are the more technical mathematical terms that we will use more often than not. Some examples of translating situations. So the first one is four less than the quantity six times a number n. So you see six times a number n, that's six n. Now I want four less than six n. If I asked you for four less than 20, I would hope you'd tell me that 16 is four less than 20. How do you get that? 20 minus four. So if I ask you for four less than six n, you'll notice the six n would need to come first, just like the 20 came first here. That's the only case where it actually reads kind of backwards between the English and the math is when the phrase less than is used. That's the really specific case. So if you see less than, you know that the order in which the statements occurred, really the second item has to come first because we want less than the first item. So 6n minus 4. Second statement is 3 times the sum of 7 and a number y. So let's do the sum of 7 and a number y. That must be 7 plus y. And I want three times whatever that is, so I need to multiply all of it. So I put parentheses around it. Three times seven plus y. Third one, the difference of 22 and the square of a number m. Let's do square of a number m. That's m squared. Now I want the difference of 22 and m squared. Difference is subtraction. 
So for this, it's going to be 22 minus m squared. You'll notice that the way that you read this one occurred in the same order over here. So there's no switching. It's only with less than that the order switches because of really the, the logic of English converting back to math. Last one, the quotient. Quotient means division. So the quotient when the quantity 10, so when you see quantity, you know the next two items are grouped together, 10 plus a number x. So we have 10 plus x being divided by, because it says quotient, 2. So it's going to look like that. You can even put parentheses around this if you want. You don't have to. It's implied. So there are four examples of translating using uh, English terms and translating it into math. You'll have a few in the homework. It's also important, though, to be able to do it in a real-world context, because that's kind of the end goal. So here's a situation. Let's say your basic monthly charge for a cell phone service is $30, and that includes 300 free minutes. You are, however, charged for every extra minute that you use over 300. One month, you paid $3.75 for 15 extra minutes. Find your total bill if you use 22 extra minutes. Well, let's find how much it is for each additional minute. So it's $3.75 for 15 extra minutes. If I take 375 and divide it by 15, I'm going to find that it's $0.25, which means it's 25 cents for each additional minute. Now I need to use that to find what the total bill is going to be if I use 22 extra minutes. So the total is going to be at least $30, because I get charged that, plus 25 cents for every additional, for every additional minute. Now I just need to substitute 22 in for my minutes. So 30 plus 0 0.25 times 22. That's going to be 30 plus 22 times 0 0.25 is 550. So the total is going to be $35.50. They don't really charge for extra minutes anymore. They usually will charge for data overages, but it's the same uh, philosophy. I'm going to have you try. So here's your situation. Your printer takes 36 seconds to print a small photo and 60 seconds to print a large one. You, I, want, I would like you to write an expression for how much time it would take if your printer is going to take uh, both printing small and large photos. How much time would it take? Can you write an expression? And then can you use that expression to find how much time it would take if your printer is actually going to do 12 small photos and 5 large ones? So the first one, you're kind of developing the expression, the statement. The second one, you're using it. So this is the only one on the whiteboards today. So pull out your whiteboard. The marker and the rag are in the pouch on the side. And try this. So let's pause the video now for maybe two minutes. Give it a go. Once everyone's had a chance to try, uh, you can check with the neighbor and then unpause the video to see what the answer is. OK, here's how you should think about it. First part it said is it's 36 seconds for a small photo. So 36 maybe times s for however many small photos there are, plus 60 seconds for every large one, so 60 for every large, cursive L. There's my expression. Now I'm going to use it. 36 times 12 plus 60 times 5. 36 times 12 is going to leave us at 432 plus 300, and that is in total of 732 seconds. That's kind of hard to picture, so if you divide by 60, because there's 60 seconds in a minute, you'll find that it takes just over 12 minutes to do that order. So that's an example of converting from English to math to write an expression to then calculate a value in a situation. And that's the end of 0 0.3. That's for expressions. Now we're going to be putting two expressions together to form either an equation or, in an, or an inequality. We call these statements open sentences. An open sentence in mathematics contains two algebraic expressions and a symbol that compares them. There's two types of sentences in mathematics. One is an equation and one is an inequality. The first we'll talk about is an equation. Equation is a mathematical sentence formed by placing the equal sign between two expressions. An example might be if I have 8x minus 10 and then I have 3x plus 5 and I put the equal sign between them. Now I know that those two expressions are equal to one another. We call that sentence an equation in mathematics. An inequality is when we have two expressions compared to one another, and they are not equal to one another. We use another symbol besides the equals to sign. We'll discuss those in a few slides. The ones that you're, that you're thinking of would be greater than or less than. So let's say we use the same expressions, 8x minus 10 
and 3x plus 5, but this time they're not equal to one another. The one on the left is actually greater than, so pointing to the right. We'll talk about why pointing to the right means greater than, but that does mean greater than. So that's an example of an inequality. First thing you should be able to do is look at a scenario and determine if it's an equation or an, or an inequality. First uh, setting. The total cost to attend a baseball game is equal to the price per ticket times the number of people attending. Well, this statement even says is equal to, so that is going to be an equation. Second one, a recipe calls for no more than two cups of sugar. No more than two cups of sugar means uh, two cups of sugar or less. That is an inequality since it is not strictly equal to because it could be less. Third one, the total profit needs to be at least equal to the total cost. At least equal to means that or bigger because it doesn't necessarily need to be equal to. It could be bigger. This is also an inequality. So the first one was an equation, and two and three were both inequalities. If you flip your page in your notes, you'll find this table at the top of the next page. This is going to be our summary table for equations and inequalities. This symbol is our symbol for equal to. Uh, associated words would be the same as, or you'll hear is, like 2 plus 2 is 4. That means equal to. This symbol right here, if you have an arrow pointing to the left, that means less than. The reason why is because imagine a number line. Let's pick a number that's kind of easy to work with. How about 10? If I think of the numbers to the left of 10, those numbers are less than 10. So as I head to the left, I have a left pointing arrow. My numbers are less than. That's why I would say 6 is less than 10. 6 is to the left of 10. Opposite of that, let's say I have numbers to the right of 10, like 11 or 12 or 13. As I head to the right, the numbers are getting greater. So I would say 13 is to the right of 10 because 13 is greater than 10. So a right pointing arrow means greater than. Some of you might have heard stories about crocodiles and alligators eating other things. That was more of a trick. The real reason that mathematicians chose to the left to mean less than is because of your number line. To the right, the numbers are getting bigger. That means greater than. We can combine these statements if it's a left pointing arrow with a bar underneath, that means less than or equal to. If it's a right pointing arrow with a bar underneath, that means greater than or equal to. Another phrase you'll hear for this is at least or no less than. Another phrase that you'll see for the less than or equal to statements are at most or no more than. Now we're going to practice translating. So this one says the difference of twice a number k, so twice a number k is 2k, difference means subtraction, so I've got 2k minus 8, because it says difference, meaning subtraction, and 8, and then it says is. Is means equals, so 12. There you go, 2k minus 8 is 12. Next part says the product of 6 and the number n, that's 6 times n, then it says, is at least, if I told you you need to make at least $30 selling lemonade, you need to make $30 or more. So is at least means greater than or equal to, then this says 24. Last one, you can go to your table too. You see right here it says at least, that means greater than or equal to. So your table has that as well. Use that to your benefit. Use your note packet when doing your homework. Third one says a number y is no less than 5, and this really should say no more than 13. So a number y is no less than 5. That means greater than or equal to 5. And then you would, can say and y needs to be no more than 13. So less than or equal to 13. So those are three examples of translating with equations and inequalities. Next part is going to be checking equations or inequalities. If I give you a number to check. So first situations, 8 minus 2x equals 2. I want to check whether 3 is a solution to this equation or inequality. So what do I do? I substitute it in. 8 minus 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So I end up with 8 minus 6. Well, 8 minus 6 is 2. So I get 2. And 2 equals 2. Since this is a true statement, it makes logical sense. We would say 3 is a solution. 3 works. Next one. 4x minus 5 equals 6. Substitute it in. 4 times 3 minus 5. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 5 is 7. 
7 does not equal 6. So in this case, 3 is not a solution because it doesn't make a logical statement. 7 doesn't equal 6. What about 2z plus 5 is greater than 12? If I put 3 in there, I get 2 times 3 plus 5. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 5 is 11. Is 11 greater than 12? It is not greater than 12. So you draw a line through it to say no. That means 3 is not a solution. That one fails. Just another for you to check. You're not going to actually do this one on the whiteboard. You can just think about it out loud. What if it was 5 plus 3n is less than or equal to 20? If you put 3 in there, let's think to ourselves, 5 plus 3 times 3 is less than or equal to 20. Just think about that for a second. Is that going to give you a true statement or a false statement? Well, 3 times 3 is 9. 5 plus 9 is 14. 14 is less than or equal to 20. It's not equal to, but it could be less than. As long as it's less than or equal to, it makes a true statement. And because that's a true statement, 3 is a solution. Okay? Last thing that we have to do is do an application one for this section. Talk about how these ideas are applied. So golf is an excellent example when you're comparing two scores. You're competing against somebody. So let's say you're playing in a golf tournament. The tournament works by playing two rounds and then they add your two scores together. In golf, the lowest score wins, because in golf you're trying to complete the holes in the least amount of shots. They call those strokes. So here is your competitor's score. Here's your score. Your competitor just finished their second and final round. You're about to start your second and final round, and you want to know what you need to shoot in order to have a lower score than them. So we want your score to be less than to the left on the number line of your competitor's score. Well, how do we do this? Well, we add our scores up. So whatever we shoot in the second round plus whatever we shot in the first round, same for the competitor, 86 plus 76. If I add this up on the right-hand side, I'm going to get 86 plus 76 is going to be 162. If I subtract the 82 that I shot in the first round, I will see I need to shoot less than an 80. So a 79 or a 78 or a 77 dot, dot, dot in order to win. If I shoot an 80, we will tie. If I shoot more than 80, my competitor will win because I will lose because I will have a bigger score. So that is it for 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. Uh, answers are going to be right here. If you want to eventually go back and pause the video on this screen and leave it up here while you work, then you can check your answers. But that is it for today. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you very much.